Jehova Malak, Ola Molamat, Jehova Malak, Yami Rakis, Jehova Dabar, Olam Olam, Yatsab Shami Yami, Jehova Gadol, Makarian Tios, Jehova Eronai, Jehova Elohim, Kurios Tios Pate Kreta, Kurios Tios Pistos. I Basilian, O Kurios, O Tios, O Pantacreta. Kurios, Kurion, Kai Basilios, Basilion. Derek Emunabakar, Mishvat Shaba. The Megalogai of Yahweh Elelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling. This very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant, great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, and great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk, breath by breath. In the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Understanding the great life which is given for us. Wherewith God the Father who planned being executed by his Son and Lord God the Holy Spirit revealing it to us. Particularly many passages in Isaiah chapter 53 beginning with verse number 5 that we all went astray in our own ways and did not come back to do the will of God the Father. Yet it is the glorious will of God the Father sending His Son, so that none should be perished, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of His will and grow up in grace, particularly doing the great will of God the Father on this earth. The only reason for us He has made is to be upright, but we follow our own devisings and become liars to the cause. So, dear brethren, the things that have been prepared and kept for us on today's date, having a word of prayer, we shall come back and continue these things which have been there for us in eternity past on for today's date. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique palate wonders of His Word, and we will learn the word of truth. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, once again coming unto Thy grace, we learn Thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, would enlighten and challenge us the things that are prepared and kept for us on today's date concerning the spirit of Yetzal, which have given for us to hear your counsel, obey it, receiving instructions through discipline process, and considering to be wise for our later end. At all, Lord, many people knowing not, they love to invent their own inventions, and at the end, they do not understand that it is the only counsel of Lord God the Father which abideth forever. To this section, Father, as we go and study these things, what you have designed for us on today's date, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. As we have been noticing the things about the seven spirits in one spirit, and making up our hearts to be perfect and complete in the sight of Lord God, as we have to know when Simon Peter goes on to say to Simony, the man who asked the gift of Lord God with the money. He teaches to him, your heart is not right. He teaches to him that the standards of your thinking is not in accord with the truth. Repent that thought. And he goes on to further say unto him, I perceive that you have been there with gall of bitterness and bond of iniquity. The word gall of bitterness is nothing but. It is poisoned with extreme wickedness. And bond of iniquity is nothing but. The life that you are living is unrighteous, which is not in accord with the truth. And you are bounded for it. 
Today many people in the present Christendom are been living as good as a life of call of bitterness and bond of iniquity because if they would listen to the instructions of Jehovah and to the spirit of the council yet saw what has been given to us they would move to the next stage known as the spirit of understanding bina if they would be there in the standards of understanding they would acquire to be known as wisdom but this people they are not interested to look what is wisdom as we read in ecclesiastes 7:29 as well whatever lord god has made man he made him perfect it is the man who went along to pass down the paths to say to god the father to die ask a woman to give to me and the woman whom you gave she deceived me this is how man is when the man knew when he saw the first time the first one to look the whole sin nature man was adam to look upon his eve because she sinned but yet this man comes up to put to pass down the paths he saying to that god did i ask this woman this woman gave me the fruit to eat if not i would have been perfect though it was a choice for him to be in the word of god with christ jesus of the lord of god in the garden of eden or to be out without the word of god and to be with eve outside of the garden of eden and man always loves to obey that which is lies and that's what we have to look man always takes his pleasure and lead to see that which is lies therefore lord god he gives though in the spirit of counsel to walk in the path that could lead them to glory that could lead them to understand the will of god the father that could cause them to realize we don't have anything else on this earth apart from lord's mind yet these people they think we have to invent many schemes we have to invent many gimmicks we have to invent many things which are feasible for us because what is good and carryable by the man by that i meant to say that he could bear that burden that's what is going to plan in his life he doesn't want to look that which could be as the demands of christ he may think it's a tough time for him to carry his cross every day and follow my christ but the word of lord god in deuteronomy chapter 30 teaches to us very very important simple principles with all of your heart and with all of your soul if you don't turn back to lord god the father then your life is not worth that's what it teaches to us particularly beginning with verse number 8 He says that the desire of Lord God the Father is rather than blaspheming his name on this earth the way you suffer for blaspheming his name he doesn't want that suffering for you he wants you not to blaspheme me but rather honor his name and by honoring his name he wants you to suffer for Christ and for his glory enjoying to look the enemies of Lord God being cursed on behalf of you enemies of lord god being absolutely counted for persecution that's what he wanted therefore we have to pay back double not just once we have to pay back double what the enemies of lord god has done to my christ we have to pay them back in double so comparing with revelation chapter 18 we read what is that that was double the things what he has done the things what he has filled you up says babylon comparing to it you have to pay it double because the glory what was for god the father was been taken out now you have to pay them back in double you have to give them back to move from glory to glory if law has come by moses then we have grace and truth by christ jesus so we have to be the people to pay them back double and we have to be the people where there is the word of lord god dwelling where there is the word of christ being in his holiness there the people will survive for a greater length of life so that they could dwell and give to lord god the glory double it is no longer the time when we could say we fear or we resist the only thing what you fear and resist is because you don't take in bible doctrine taking in bible doctrine you have no fear taking in bible doctrine you cannot 
thing to say you cannot trample but rather you would say I came here as a winner I am come here to do the will of God the Father and you go to fight the Lord's battle to the core because he has commissioned us he has given us this power and privilege of exuse authority not only just to become as disciples or growing up as grammatias but in return to go and make disciples of all the nations so if Lord God be with us who could be against us we are more than conquerors in everything we do so what we can do we can do double we have to pay back double glory to Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God in this life. Though the life is single for us, the glory what we pay back to Lord, our God is double. That's how we have been designed in the church age. Particularly to look upon this word, he says in Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse number 7, so that the enemies of Lord God could be cursed, the enemies of Lord God could be persecuted. It's not you. Why is it then you are suffering? You are suffering because you haven't done the will of God the Father. That's why. The sicknesses, the sadnesses, the failures of this life belong to Satan because Satan is right from the beginning a failure because it's a liar from the beginning. Therefore, when it is a liar and it is a murderer from the beginning and it is a father of lies, there will be no truth. There will be no extension of life. As Zechariah chapter 8 verse number 3 teaches to us and verse number 4 particularly, when Zoyan has been called a city of truth, when Zoyan has been called a place of great holiness, then quite obviously you have to understand the length of the days of man and woman will be increased. Therefore in Numbers chapter 6 he teaches to them in comparison with Amos chapter 2 verses 11 and 12. If anyone would take a O of another right, instruct them according to the instructions of truth. And let them be at the door of tabernacle doing the will of God the Father. Because we don't have time to engage ourselves into the details of life. We are called out once in the church age to be holy and blameless so that when we could stand in his presence to be the word as we read which goes on to say unblameable or irreprehensible Colossians 1 22 for that cause he says you have to root you have to be rooted and grounded in love every day in Christ carrying up your cross and following to do the will of God the Father so dear brethren we have been given the seven spirits, the powerful spirits, operation in one spirit. So that there is no excuse for us to be left as failures in the Christendom, church, age, Christianity life. The use of beyond principle of the true spiritual life. We cannot be any failure. Therefore, he says, hear the counsel, consider your later end. Why do you want to die, sin unto death, by not considering your later end? Look upon the truth in Christ. Consider the reality in Christ. The greater you reject the reality of the word of Lord God, the greater will be your life into lies. Because when Lord God the Father created man, he created him upright. He gave him only one simple principle every day. Eat the word of Lord God first being taught by Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And when he teaches to you the word of truth, come back and learn and develop yourselves to look what is the mind of Christ? And walk according to that will. That's what he has planned for us. And nothing else than that. But man went along to invent many schemes. The same thing he says again in Luke chapter 13 and 14 for us, dear brother. If anyone wants to follow me, let him take up his cross and follow me. There is no excuse if you don't follow him by taking up your cross. This is what I have designed. If you are not my disciple, then I don't have any relationship with you. Because you have to fill in not just to become like Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, but you have to do greater things than Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, and pay back double to the sins of Satan what it has done to the world. And the simple thing when Lord God the Father says, it is I who shall reign forever and forever, when he is reigning forever and forever, then what is it that we fear and pay not back to Satan double of its destruction that it has been made to us and the way how man has fallen for sin and how much we have to pull them back from the slave market of sin. And Satan hinders them. Satan blinds them. Satan doesn't want to make them to know the truth. But are you aware that you have to know the truth? Without the truth you cannot survive. If it was in the Old Testament, teeth for teeth, eye for eye. 
But for us in the church age, it is grace and truth. In that grace given to you, you have to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Until the day of eternity, every day you have to be available for the work of doctrine. And what a sad thing we look. Though Christ our Lord our God wants to pay to the enemies those curses, he wants to pay them back that persecution rather than you suffer. These people are interested to be suffered on behalf of Satan. They have taken the place instead of Christ to suffer for him. They have taken the place to suffer for Satan. Therefore they are walking vanity in their thinking of their brains. Everyone walketh imagination evil. No one speaks the truth. Why will not waters flow like rivers? That's what we read in Jeremiah chapter 9. My head flows with the waters of like tears in my eyes. I would be dwelling in the place of wilderness. As we read again in 1 Kings chapter 2 verses 36 and following when Benaniah goes to kill Joab. He was been there in the house of wilderness. It was buried in the place known as wilderness. Wilderness is a place where there is no habitation of doctrine, Midbar. And this doctrine where there is no habitation, then every believer who doesn't have truth in him is as good as being in the stages of wilderness. And they allowed to think they can kid Lord God by mocking them by not following and doing the things what Lord God the Father has said to do them. And he says in Luke chapter 6, Why you call me Lord, Lord? And you do not do the things which I ask you to do. Yesterday we were reading the word called as Teluaguas. The word Telos plus Aguo. In comparison with Mark chapter 8 verses 25. In order to see clearly, first we have to come back to understand up to what extent our life is really understood. So first thing he says, when he was being spit upon that mud and applied upon his eyes and washed, he saw men walking like trees. That was for the Old Testament. Partial, he says in 1 Corinthians 13, 8. And for the second time he gives the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So that now we could look clearly. Telios plus Aguo. End of perfection is Telio. Aguo meant to say to shine like bright radiance. So that we could come back and shine for Christ Jesus of our Lord of our God. Paying back double. For the glory what has been lost right from the creation of mankind. Therefore in the church age when we read in Isaiah 53. We are so much greatly blessed. And if we don't do the work, we are inexcusable. At one hand, we are truly and highly blessed. At the other hand, if we don't do the work of Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, we are inexcusable, whether you believe it or not, dear brethren. So the first time the people were in 1 Corinthians 13, 8 standards, looking blindly or partially. But when the perfection has come, he says, even that perfection is little in 1 Corinthians 13, 11. In the same manner, the things what we have for us in the church age, they seemeth to be little in comparison to the great things what the Bible doctrine has to yet reveal for us when we go back home. Therefore, the things that are needed for us on this earth, they have been given for us, but the things that are in the heaven, they abide forever. When we go back home, we learn. But we are not able to master the things that have been given for us in our hands right now and obey the truth and understand to live a life of truth. The main problem with us is, dear brethren, we are not understanding our later end. We are not considering our future end. If we were wise, we would consider our future end. That's what we look particularly in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 29. The same thing over here he says for us. The curses which could come, that are for your enemies, not for you. The things which could come, the persecution that are for your enemies, not for you. But we are suffering on behalf of Satan rather than suffering on behalf of Christ. That's the great problem for us. 
If we would cross check our life and we would look, we are really suffering for Satan because the curse and the persecution and the hatred is towards Satan, not to man. When Lord God made man, he made man in his own image so that he could win and walk according to the will of God the Father, given him the free will. But when man rebelled, he became a part of the Satan's curse. He became a part of the Satan's hatred. He became the part of the Satan's persecution. And though Lord God the Father right from the beginning goes on to give him instructions not walk like the way that the peoples are walking particularly under the imagination of their mind serving idols. Yet we also love to walk in the same way. And he says the same thing over here for us. If you shall hearken, that is Shamma to hear and to obey in the voice of Yehovah Elohim and Shamer to guard and absorb the instructions of him, particularly number one, and then the statutes of him that is called as the prescription demands of doctrine, which are being written in the scroll of the law. The word Katab, what is that word meant to say for us? Written. The description part, the inscription part, the prescription part and the subscription part. And what has been written in this law, the law refers that time referring to the entire Old Testament and now to the entire New Testament as well, Torah. And all the words of this law you have to fulfill. What does it meant to say? Even if you have been called to be a king, what is the rule for kings in the past dispensation? You don't find that rulership of king in the new dispensation, that is the church. But in the Old Testament, second, in Deuteronomy chapter 17, in verse number 18, what is the work of the king? What he has to do? He has to write a copy of the law. And when he writes a copy of the law, in the New Testament, he calls them to be scribes. And in Matthew 13, 52, he goes to teach, joining as disciples, they have to grow up as scribes. So no matter wherever you take their brethren, we have to fulfill every, each and every word of Bible doctrine. Therefore, he says for us that... I have not come to destroy the law, but I came to fulfill the law. I shall not let go even iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera, saith our Lord in Matthew chapter 5. So if it is in the Old Testament for us to look, what are those instructions? What are those code of wisdom to be used? Metzah. And now for us the instructions, which is nothing but the choke of life. That is called the prescription of your life. And if he wants them to be done, and if he wants them to be made absolutely great in your life. And if you hear what are the things, if he wants them to be, if he, if he demands in your life to do it, and we say, no, Lord, we don't want to do that, then how we would pay double for the curses of Satan? At one end, Lord God, the Father wants to pay to Satan and its angels double portion. At the other end, you are coming as a mediator between God and Satan because of your deeds. And you are taking, or you are partaking in the curses and in the persecutions and in the hatred of Satan to you. You are coming and joining your Wi-Fi network being given to Satan. And you are joining to use that Wi-Fi network and you are enjoying your great data. You know, how is it? In the present smartphones, you know very well what is a Wi-Fi given through a modem. And if you have a smartphone and you, are, and you want to have an access to internet, you just go and connect that Wi-Fi. Sometimes, sometimes that Wi-Fi will be locked. We call it as a hotspot to be opened up. And when it has been locked, you want to ask the password. The same principle for you as well, dear brother. You are accessing the Wi-Fi of this world, Satan's thinking. You know what is the password? Your ignorance and arrogance. Not having the spirit of counsel to guide you. That's the password. When there is the absence of the spirit of counsel of guiding in you, then quite obviously you go to take the hot spot of this world. And when you've been partaking in the hot spot of this world, you're living yourself to take or a partner or a joint partaker, not with Christ Jesus of the Lord of our God. But the things that have been designed to Satan for its curse, for its hatred, for its persecution. You are saying, Lord, even I will take care of that end of walking like aliens or walking like the fallen angels. Which is a very, very sad part for us to look in the present Christendom. How many people are perishing without this truth? Do you know what is the code of wisdom given for us? Do you know what is the prescription of Bible doctrine? It says you have to kathab. You have to be a scribe. It is not just reading the Bible, it is called for us to write the Bible as well. 
No matter whatever you may think, dear brethren, you may think we are written epistles. But how much of the time you are meditating upon the word of Lord God to look, you know, each and every nick and corner of the Bible, dispensationally. And you may say, I know many things, I have quoted many passages. Do you know that in exegetical manner? The thoughts of exegesis will vary in comparison to the thoughts of translations, dear brother. The thoughts of exegesis will give you the thoughts of Lord God. The thoughts of translations will never give you the thoughts of Lord God. And that's how the people are today for us. All the words of this law, whatever has been given, have we known the code of wisdom, have we known the prescription of these things? And the sad part is, people haven't known, or being aware yet, what might be the prescription. Therefore, he says, if you, the clause condition, number one, if you will hear, hear Shammah, to hear and obey, unto the voice of the Lord God, and keep his commandments, and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if you turn unto the Lord thy God, not only just to keep these commandments, or a diligently searching what have been recorded and kept for us in the Bible, but you have to turn, take a U-turn, shoo. That's what the word meant to say in the Hebrew. The song code number, 7725. You have to take a U-turn, complete U-turn, free from the standards of this world as we read in First John 2, 15 through 17 as well. The one who doeth the will of Lord God the Father, that alone abideth. Then you may ask, what about the other things? He says, the lust of flesh, the lust of fire, the pride of life will vanish off with it. So you need to take a U-turn because if you're just going in the same way, you're going in the same way of lust of flesh, lust of fire and pride of life. And now you're making up your time to look what is the spirit of the counsel of God. What is that spirit of Yatsa given to us? Though the waters may run out from your eyes like tears, Though you may think you are really doing the will of God, but in reality you are very, very far away from the will of God. And yet you think performing these things weekly ones, monthly ones to the church attendance and can improve your life. You are not really making it up, but rather you are playing mockery with Lord God. Though the Bible says you have to be alert every day in the church. Though the Bible says you have to turn back to the will of God the Father. Sometimes we find very clearly why there is no peace, why there is no great of healing to our lands. By that I meant to say healing through the word of Lord God, as we read in Zechariah 8.3. Why? Because there is no truth in our land. There is no practicing of emeth in our land. The place where we survive is geographical location irrespective of the world. You have to be always a land of truth. You have to be always a mountain of holiness. As we read in Joshua chapter 5, saying them, once again, circumcise them on the mountain of foreskins. The word itself is a mountain of foreskins. That's what Joshua was being mandated in Joshua 2 and 3, chapter 5 verses 2 and 3. And he did it with a sharp stone, not knife. And there we find a mountain called as mountain of foreskins. Lord God wants us not just to be a city of truth or a mountain of holiness, but He wants every believer to be the temple of the living Lord, because that's what you have been predestined in Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, to be the temple of the true living Lord of our God to the highest. You're not just an ordinary man to think in the ordinary ways. You're extraordinary in Christ Jesus, and the privilege is given to you so that you are now called to be the temple of the Holy Spirit of Lord God. That Holy Spirit has given to you the seven spirits, operation in seven spirits. And every moron who has been born, an unbeliever as well, knowing not the will of God the Father, if he would believe in Christ, given to him these 34 things, as Lewis Perichafa compiled it, and once again redone by Robert Bunker Thieme, he makes now it to be 40 things. And that also includes the seven spirits, in one spirit. And every believer has been given so much so that they could go back and make unbelievers to understand though they have been born in this church age. 
What a great privilege, Lord God the Father has a plan with them, though they are spiritually dead. What a great work Christ our Lord of our God has planned for them through their lives as well. And if anyone who has been born on this earth in the church age period, believing in Christ without perishing, without uh, to perish without believing in Christ, is not designed, he's been designed to believe in the Lord. Because every creature, he says, that they have heard the gospel of Lord God in Philippians 1.6. So that everyone could know and understand what is this and how they have to wake up to the reality of truth. And we are the instruments for it to go and teach the truth. We are the people for it to tell the truth, to nagad. And if we don't go and nagad them, and if we don't come to ascend our seven steps in Christ, as we read in Ezekiel 40.26, you will not look the further glory. You will not look the palm branches or palm trees before, behind and in front of you. You will not look and ascend the things pertaining to the greatest glory of God the Father. You will not. You may be thinking you can, but you cannot. That's how the world is today for us, dear brethren. Not ascending into the seven steps, not doing the work of Lord God the Father to the highest. They think they are quite capable of achieving the things of Christ. Therefore, dear brother, and he says, turn to Lord God with all of your heart, with all of your soul. And the command what he has given is not far away from you. It is not in the heaven, neither on the other side of the sea. So that someone could get you. He says, the word that is very nigh unto thee, it is very, very close so that you may say in your mouth, in your heart, and you may build it up and you may allow to do it. And furthermore, I have set before you this day life and good, and death and evil. This has been there for us every day. If anyone would keep up a new ministry, this should be the people. Tagline for his ministry, saying Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse number 15. And what does he write over there? I have cut before you. Life and good. The word good is thobe, which is agreeable in the sight of the Lord God. And he says, death and evil, ra'a, which is not I desire. That's the word ra'a. Death is nothing but your death, moth. And life is nothing but kaya, to live a true life. And the Hebrew, it is not just kaya, but it is kaim, it is plural. Before you have cut and placed the things pertaining to lives and that which could be good, that which is acceptable and agreeable in the sight of Lord God. Where is the word for you? You may say it is in the heaven, I have to, how I have to get it? Or you may say it is beyond the sea, I have to get it. It says right now in the churches, it is in you. It's indwelling in you. It's very, very close and nearby in you, in your mouth, in your heart. Because now you are the temple of the living Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And we are inexcusable, though these words have been written long back in the book of Deuteronomy by Moses. The same words again quoted by, Christ, by Paul in Romans chapter 10. We have something great to understand over here. It's very near to you. That's how many people are losing out the battle of the law thinking a pastor should come back and explain to them or the reverend or the bishop until and unless you come one step ahead Lord God the Father will not take his steps that's what we read into the standards when Moses takes a first step in Exodus chapter 3 the way how Moses takes his place he says let me go and see first how the burning bush has not been consumed and he goes there. First he takes the step and then Lord God calls him. Till he could take the step, Lord God will not call him. That's the point. Till you could have a desire to look and learn because his word is settled forever in the heaven. Till you could take up that step in the fear of Lord God, in the, in the trembling of his nature and go back and do the will of God the Father. Till you could get, take back that step, God the Father wouldn't call you. It is what you have to search, you have to knock, you have to see, you have to ask. 
then Lord God the Father according to his own heart he shall send his shepherds he says Jeremiah 315 whose work is to feed you with knowledge and with understanding and where is the word it is very nigh in your heart where is the solution for you the solution is no longer found with the one who's working gimmicks or miracles it is the solution found only in your knees kneel down to God the Father and ask him it is he who is going to give you the counsel of Lord God the spirit of the Yetzab will operate in you. But the spirit of Yetzab will not operate until and unless you first have a right and true heart with Lord God the Father rather than becoming evil. Rather than having your heart to be filled with poison of extreme wickedness. Or being subjected to unreality in life, unrighteousness of life. And many of the people are in the standards. If you don't have till to have a right and true fellowship with Lord God the Father, never there will be a time for you to understand that you don't even have the first thing called as a spirit of the fear of Lord God. You sin and again you think you can do the will of God. Therefore he says, the steps of a great man, Gabor man, have been given by Lord God for his march, for his battle. Though he falls, yet it is Lord God the Father will not cast him out, yet he upholdeth him back. And the seed of the righteous will never beg, he says. They will be not deficient of the word. Because they love to seek every day the word of Lord God. Therefore he designed the Israelites in the past to become the Nazarites of Lord God. He has designed the churches to be greater than those Nazarites in the present Christendom. Therefore, he says, you have been now indwelled by the Trinity for the begging prayer of Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, and giving you the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And this life that has been given for us is so unique and great. Though many men longed in the past or in the future, anyone could look, they cannot because we have right now to live the life of truth in Christ. And he cannot get along his work without, other, without us. By that we meant to say, we cannot get along without him and he wants his work to be done through us. He wants to pay the work through us. And as he said to the people of the children of Abraham, that he can raise better children from the stones. So will be our life as well if we think that Lord God the Father cannot get along without us. It is we who cannot get along without him. And the greater we reject his truth, greater our life has no value and meaning at all. Because you are having a heart that is filled with wickedness poison. You are having in you becoming slaves to unrighteous living. And the people may love to come back and dobby with untempered mortar in the details of life saying that why it can be. Why Lord God the Father wants you to curse? It is you who have taken the Wi-Fi connection with the world, cosmos thinking. You are not here to get your to get the things pertaining to connected with the world. You are here to connect it with Lord God the Father so that He can reveal to you greater and high things, best things. And that's what is happening today, dear brethren, in our pulpits. They are finding men not worth enough. They are finding men in our pulpits not able to enlighten you to look what is the right word of Lord God in exegesis. They are finding the disciples or to call the church members not even worthy to look what is the counsel of Lord God but rather they are just looking what could be the details of life. The way how they have been designed to look upon the spirit of the counsel of Lord God, they haven't been looking into that terms. Every time coming up with reasons, every time coming up with excuses, every time coming up with alibis. How will their lives be, dear brethren? How you do pay double to Satan on this earth? Where you ought to be, from where you have fallen. What is the purpose of Lord God giving you this life? What is the intention of my Christ in making you to be still alive tomorrow if you are alive? Have you ever made up your life to look? 
Are you still like a crybaby giving options to say that you don't believe the law? You don't believe in his marvelous grace. You don't believe in his marvelous works and deeds. Because you are hardened your heart in the standards of your lies on this earth. Are you still giving such excuses? Dear brethren, whether you believe it or not, we are here to pay back double for the damage that Satan has done to Christ's work on this earth. We are here to pay back double glory to Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, growing from glory to glory. Whether you are with Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, or you are still into the details of life, that is left to you. But we have been placed over here to be double, to do double for Lord God. That's why he has planned his strategy from the church age, giving to us the pair of Baltimore more privileges. Giving to us that your winners already in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, he says, Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ Jesus our Lord of God has set us free. Why do you want to be the people who are liars to the call? Why do you want to become once again entangled into the yoke of into the yoke of bondage of sin? And yet, dear brethren. We haven't even come to look the first spirit operating in us, the spirit of the fear of law. Rather than we could come to understand the spirit of the counsel of the law. Where have been left behind? Still teaching to many of the people silly things. Looking upon the time, you have to be eating strong meat. The same thing he says in 1 Corinthians 3. I am not able to communicate to you that which is of a solid food because you are still drinking milk, milk of its kind. And milk has been drunk by babies, dear brother. So you see, men are still trees and you cannot make a perfect radiance of his sight to be completed clearly. And those who don't look clearly, they are still void of the spirit of counsel operating in them. They are still very far away. Though what the Bible calls them to be, they aren't. It will take an ample of time to come back to what the Bible says to them to be so. Because Lord God the Father searcheth the hearts. And he shall not give to us this doctrine until and as we first desire with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our strength in doing the will of God the Father. And the greater time we fail to desire the truth, the greater will be your failure on this earth. You lose your time. You lose the resources of Lord God. And though much has been given for us and much has been expected from us, you just lay it aside. So dear brother, and he says, I have set before you this day life and good. The Hebrew word is kaya. It is plural. Lives. And that is what the word to be as good. And what is the lives? The lives that we live on this earth. And the lives that we have in the heaven. As he says, a family in the heaven as well as on the earth. In Ephesians chapter 2. Being given access in one spirit to come back and live that life in Christ. So dear brethren, he has set before us the lives. He has set before us that which is agreeable and pleasant in the sight of Lord God's will. Only when we fulfill his commandments and when we do according to his will, we are going to have our life in statutes. We are going to have our life according to his code of wisdom. And that which have been written and kept for us, they stand written forever. And doing that is our life. The same caution of warning he gives in Leviticus 8.35. He says, if you get out from this tabernacle of the Lord God and doing not what the charge have given to you. And if you don't observe that charge or if you don't perform that charge what I have given to you, then you shall die. That's very simple with Lord God. You may be thinking that he is gracious, he is going to excuse us, he is going to do many things. But he says, no, not many men to become preachers of his word. Because in Leviticus 8 he says, you shall die, there is no excuse. You will be put to death if you don't follow the things what I have told you to do. There is no excuse. 
The very simple logic for us in James 3.1. Not many men to become the preachers of the word of God. But every believer has to execute and keep his charge. And if the believer doesn't know what is the truth that they have to keep in charge, then it is a bona fide duty of the pastor teacher to train them up to listen and to tell them what is the charge of Christ or what is the truth in Christ. So dear brethren, the number one who will be held responsible for your failure is the pastor teacher in your pulpit. Because like people, like priest you wanted and he came for you. And he went along to teach for you, for your itching ears that could please you. Rather than teaching to you all the doctrine. That's what it happens dear brethren all the time. Because man he has been constant touch with the hot spot of Satan. And the password for him is ignorance and arrogance. Password for him is a failure in Isaiah 11 too, the seven spirits operating in him. The password is Rome in Acts 8.23 as he says, Gall of bitterness and bond of iniquity. This is the password for you. You love to do evil rather than doing good. You love to perform lies rather than doing right. This is how the world has been learned. So the solution, what it could be, rebound and come back. The solution is first search your heart, whether it is in right accord with God. Word, in the mirror as you look upon yourself and you, and you adore yourself. In the same way, you have to look into the mirror of the word of Lord God and find the word of truth. And if you don't match to the will of God the Father, as you want to look to the world, when you look into the mirror and you chop off those things that are against your beauty and glory, here you chop off those things which are against the glory of my Christ, my Lord God. That's very simple logic. In order to look beautified to the people, wearing your royal diadem, he says. You want to be looking beautiful, so you quite obviously adore yourself with beauty, isn't it? In the same manner, you are here now to impress Christ our Lord our God. Anything that which is against the beauty and the honor and the glory of Christ Jesus our Lord our God, just chop it off. As the word says in Colossians 3, put to death. No excuse, dear brother, nothing on this earth is more important for us than to honor Lord God's word. And we may think we are really doing great wonders by serving Lord God weekly once. No. We have still fallen back. We are not what the word of Lord God has to be for us. We are not producing in us the complete character of my Christ that which has to be in the Lord. And we are really not concerned also. Though Christ our Lord our God has kept a choice every day before us. Lives and good that is agreeable or death and that which is inagreeable that is called as evil. And out of this evil and death people are opting to walk like children of light and day. And they are thinking they are really chosen the good part of Lord God. No. Every time you are choosing, you are choosing death. Every time you are choosing, you are opting for yourself, lies. And greater the time you spend in choosing lies, greater will be your life for difficulty to think, even to think that is my life really worth? It will be very great difficulty for you all to understand. Though this pestilence, though the way these standards in the world that they are leading men to die in the famines, you are never able to realize what is the plan of God the Father because you have rejected, rejected, rejected. You haven't come to serve Lord God with all of your heart and with all of your soul. You may be thinking you are doing great, but no, not at all, dear brother, and you aren't. So you need to wake up. What is the reality in the word of God? If he has placed before us what is good and what is to the lives of God, Bible doctrine, 
why is it we ought to choose that which is lies? For a temporary short of time on your life, you may think it is pleasing to you to be in the lustful patterns of your old sin nature by sinning against Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But the repercussions of it, the impact of it will be eternal forever. Because when once you fall into such habit, then quite obviously you will become thinking that the joy is this on this earth. When we go back home, what is there? Let us enjoy this life. Let us perform this life. And they continue to perform that life and enjoy this life day by day. That the cost being called to the standards not to do so, not to grieve, not to squelch, not to vex. They still continue the same things again and again. That's why, dear brethren, we need to look very carefully. The counsel of Lord God abideth forever. Man may invent many schemes, but they will not stand. The only thing what Lord God the Father affirms or make it firm is nothing but the word of Lord God forever. So there is no excuse for us, dear brethren. And therefore he says, set before you the life and the things pertaining to which is good in my sight. And I have set before you that which is death and that which is evil. What you want to choose, you choose. So he says, in that day, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God. The first thing is we don't love the Lord our God, do we? If you love the Lord our God, then John 14, 15 would be our life. We would keep his commandments. No matter what it would cost, we would always be to keep his commandments. But we are really not keeping his commandments because we don't love the Lord our God. But here he says for us in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse number 16, in that the things which I have given to you as a day of life and good, you have to be loving the Lord God. And not only that, you have to peripata, oh, the Greek word, what we look for, the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, blood by blood. But here he says, you have to walk in his wake, in his ways, direct the course of life. There is only one course of life for us. That course of life is nothing but to walk in his ways. And then to absorb, shamer, to guard the instructions. That is nothing but the code of wisdom. And to also absorb his statutes, the choke, the prescription part. And the judgments of him. What is the judgments? The things what he has decreed upon others when they do not believe upon the word. Even Satan knows very well. Its part is always in the eternal lake of fire. So he doesn't want you to be in the glorious presence of Lord God the Father taking his position when you are superior in the positional truth, when you believe in Christ. So Satan knows very well the things what you have, what you enjoy, what you will be future in the mansions of Lord God. The only thing is, we shall not found you to be naked there in his presence. Because you haven't clothed yourself into the gracious grace of salvation of Lord's will. And falsely people are thinking they're clothing up. They are not clothing up, they're putting patches. They're putting new patches to the old skins or old cloth. As we read that in Luke 5, 37 to 39. And what they're putting patches? They're putting patches to think that old garments still I will keep but I will just type or or put a new patch on that old garden. But he says, no. Old clothes remove it off, put on the new clothes. New wine cannot be holden in the old bottles. Likewise, the things pertaining to your old sin nature, you cannot contain the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The old sin nature has to be put to death. Necrosatic, Colossians 3.5. And that's what we have been told. That's what we have been given in the Bible to follow it and to approve it. And to fight for such faith as Jude writes. Not for the things what the world is fighting. They hardly they are living the Christian way of life or in simple terms the plan of God. What you have to be as a plan of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, you aren't living that life. Though you have been given the seven spirits in one spirit to do the will of God the Father. And that's what it happens, dear brethren. Because of your connection of hotspot to Wi-Fi or the things pertaining to Cosmos Diabolicus, hotspot connection, what you're enjoying. Now it may seem to you to be good. Now it may seem to you to be perfect. 
but at the end it is not. Therefore, if you are wise enough, you will consider your future. You will consider the later end. Wise men are there, they look upon every viewpoint of the thinking at the judgment seat of Christ so that when they appear in his presence what they would be, how they would be and what their life would be in the Lord. That's what they would be thinking every time. Because at every breath what they take does it match to the glory of God because we do not know when is our death or rapture. So till the time while we are alive and kept on this earth, are you a man of truth or are you a man of holiness? Putting upon the new cloths, Ephesians 4.24, and Dikaya Sunya, Kaya Hosea, Tis Te Salatiya. Therefore always worrying about the judgments, what he has given to the past who did not obey the word of Lord God and we learn from those examples. Being aware about such ordinances and such judgments of Lord God. Up to what extent can we really work the will of Lord God? Though we have been called to do the will of Lord God the Father to the highest, up to what extent are we really worrying about that? Dear brethren, it may seem to be the same things, but for us it is a reverse of waters flowing out from our soul in the pain towards Lord God that the people are perishing without doing the will of Lord God. So dear brethren, he says, remember to love the Lord God and come back and to walk in his ways. In that you live. This is the why, this is the reason why you have been given the life and good before you. So he further goes to teach for us. So that you may live and you may increase and barak. That is what Lord God the Father blesses you when you kneel down. Yehovah Elohim in the land which you are entering, where you are going to tenant there. The same thing for us, we are also tenants on this earth. We are on the pilgrimage trip on this earth. We are not a permanent residence over here on this earth. That comes after the things pertaining to the second advent of my Christ. And when we come back to be in the new heaven and the new earth. But he says again a, again, a, again a condition for us in Deuteronomy 30 verse number 17. But if thy heart turn away, that is, if you don't listen and you will not hear, that is Shamma, to hear and to obey, but shall be drawn away, that is, you are impelled and you board on yourself to other gods and serve them. And he says, I tell you the day that to perish you shall perish. That's what it happens when you go back to give to other gods, number one priority. And that was a time for them without being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But for us now, in the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we have to be the people to say, to trample Satan under our feet, to pay back double for the works what Satan has done in double. Winning men for Christ, making them to be disciples, making them to become the grammatias. That's what you have to pay back double. As you perish for the standards of your perishing, so he says, you have to pay back now, double. And not you shall prolong your days on the ground which you are crossing the Jordan to enter their word to tenant her. It's very simple logic. Know the mind of Christ, live the mind of Christ. If you don't love to live the mind of Christ, then quite obviously you will die, sinner to that. People may celebrate in the world today for USA, their freedom date. But subjected to sin, they are no way in free. You are free indeed only when the Son of God makes you free. Not only for salvation, but also through the thinking patterns of you to think the mind of Christ. The same principle applies to every man on this earth. We are not free till Christ our Lord our God could set us free through the mind of Christ when we have his same mind. To live according to his standards as kainiketesis make up our lives according to his will alone and greater the time we spend still thinking cosmos diabolicus and making our brains to reign through cosmos diabolicus thinking fear worry anxiety whenever you have that you're saying you don't believe Lord God God Lord God is a liar that's what you're proving to the world 
But he cannot be a liar. He is not a blasphemer. He is not a one. It is we because of our unbelief. It is always immutable in veracity, the truth. It is our negligence to believe with full faith, having full confidence in the Lord. As he says for them, is it easy in Matthew chapter 9 in verse number 5 to say to be healed or to take up your couch and run? The same thing he said. He arose, he took up his couch and he was into the business of the Lord. Because you are no longer to be saying that you should be healed. You are already healed. You have to just take up your couch and you have to run. Already Satan has been defeated. It is no longer that you still think Satan is having power on you or over you. Already Satan is defeated. Take up your promises in the Bible. Grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Grow up from milk to bread, from bread to meat. And applying those principles, you peripata, oh, you occupy in the business of the Lord. Or you tread about in the walking of the Holy Spirit of Lord. That's what he says in Matthew 9. Is it easy for us? Which is easier? It is easier for us to take up our couch and run, isn't it? Because already you are free. If you aren't free, then it is not easy for you. But you are free indeed in Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God. He set us free. And we are again being given the authority to make disciples of all the nations. The only thing is that, dear brethren, you are still not free in your thinking to know Christ. Your thinking is binding you up into the gall of bitterness and to the bond of iniquity. Your thinking is misleading you not to know the truth. Your thinking is making to understand that your counsel alone will abide rather than making the counsel of Lord God which abideth for ages to ages. When he says, though the heaven and the earth will vanish off, but my word abides forever, we say, no Lord, we don't want to be into thy word. We will look upon our own standards as Ecclesiastes 7 and 29 we read. Because when Lord God made man, he made upright. It is man who devised his devisings. And we should be pitiable upon the unbelievers who haven't come yet to look the world after. Who haven't come to understand the mind of Christ. Who haven't made those things. Because we haven't made first to grow up for his glory to be full mature. So dear brethren, he says, if you turn thy heart and they will not hear, and if you draw yourself to worship other gods and to become slaves to them, abed, then he says, I denounce unto you this day that you shall surely perish. Or he says, I tell you, Nagad, that's what the word, that this day to perish you shall perish, and you shall not prolong the days on this ground which are crossing. That's why he says, even in Leviticus 8.35, if you don't abide according to the instructions of Lord God, seven days and seven nights in the temple of the Lord God to consecrate the days of consecration completely and clearly and become a new one on the eighth day, and if you don't keep the charge for which cause I have kept you there, then he teaches to us, you shall be put to death. The same thing over years. It is about talking the land where it is going to possess now. To perish you shall perish. Without obeying the word of Lord God to become his disciple. To become as grammatias. Many men who are walking, they are thinking they are really doing the will of God. But they are dying sin unto death. What a sad part it is for us to look upon the lives of these people. Not able to look the reality in Christ. The so called Christendom believers who are just following rituals without reality. Though the seven spirits of great powerful weapons have been given to you so that you are here to take up your couch and walk and trade upon the business of Lord God. And yet, waiting for someone to think that they will come and heal you and deliver you. But it is Christ our Lord of our God who has already delivered you out. And he wants you to carry his cross every day and follow my Christ. And yet how many days more, dear brother? So he says, I call heaven and the earth to record this day against you. The word record is nothing but to testify. 
because I have kept before you the lives and the death. I gave to you blessing Barak and the cursing and whichever way you choose. Therefore he says, choose you the lives so that you and thy seed may live, Kaya, live the lives. So that you may love the Lord thy God. That's the purpose where I have been kept alive. You have kept alive to love the Lord thy God. And you must obey the voice of him. And you must cleave unto him. That is you become one with him. For he is your life and the length of your days. So that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto the fathers. To Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. And to give them what for. For the promises what he has given. He shall going to fulfill through us. That's what. The promise what he gave to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, he wants to make the world to know, yes, this is the promised Lord, as even Rahab says, our spirits have been melted when we heard about that great Lord, that terrible Lord God, we don't have any life on us. In the same way, the world should know, as we read even in Joshua chapter 4, verses 21 to 24. Why these stones have been kept as a landmark? He says, because these stones have been kept when the children will come and ask. And you should be the people to tell. And the world should know. The ends of the parts of the earth should know. Yes, it is Jehovah Elohim alone as Lord God. That's the simple reason over here as well. Why he wants you to obey the Lord God. Why he wants you to love the Lord God. Why he wants to become the standards of his thinking, cleaving unto him. So that you may have a great days on this earth to prove that Lord God alone abideth forever and forever and to make up your lives according to the standards of his thinking. And that's the spirit of counsel for us. Before in hand, he has given everything so that we are inexcusable tomorrow to say at the judgment seat of Christ, Lord, I did not know this. He has kept you alive. He has given you this grace in the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that the people who are surviving to look length of days, number of days, how they would know. <laughs> when you love thy Lord, thy God. So that the people, because of your life, they should praise God. The way how you lived a life, a legendary impact on this earth, they should understand Lord God. And the words, what you speak, when they believe the truth, even for them, Lord God has prayed in John chapter 17. What a great work we have for us. What a great testimony has been called on our behalf to make this world to believe the truth. And yet we haven't left out wakened beggarly elements in our life. Thinking to make money out of this Christ. And they represent my Lord God in injustice. And they speak Russia, criminal things and not the things of the word of Lord God. What a sad part it is for us to work. Though the spirit of counsel is given completely in the word of Lord God and being exposing to you every day, carrying your cross, following my Christ to become his way. And yet... Many are the minds of these people who do not love the word of truth. What a sad part it is for us to consider these things. Dear brethren, you want to have the length of your days on this earth, then love the Lord God, cleave unto his voice by obeying to it and cleave unto him to become one with him in one accord, in one mind, in one spirit. So that what the thinking of Christ, O Lord of God, was, it has to be in you, in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, has John the Baptist as well in John chapter 1 gives a witness. I came here to bear witness for him. He did not say that I am Elijah, he did not say I am a prophet. But he said I am a voice in the wilderness crying out and making the ways of the Lord. That's what everyone will become as a believer in Christ, following, conforming to the image of Lord God, Son and growing up to the full major stature of his thinking. That's what he will become. And yet, dear brethren, which way you want to go? In search of medicine, in search of vaccine, in search of your diet, in search of your mental peace. That's what, you know, the people are trying to teach to you. The stress factor should be less. 
chemical reactions should be according to the things pertaining to the emotions. You know, this is what the world looks to have a long life. But the word of Lord God says, doing His will is long life. Pleasing God the Father is long life. Becoming one with Him is long life. Why we live long life? So that the world may know that Christ Jesus of the Lord of God is the only Lord God. And he alone said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and we have to be the witness. And he alone said, the time and the place prepared for Satan, you don't have any part in it. And by doing and paying, and by paying double, by taking up our coach and running to do the trading business of the Lord, we have to pay back to Satan by pulling as many as we can out from the clutches of Satan, being blinded in their lives. Because of our holy manner walk of life that we live in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit day by day. Dear brethren, what is your life? If you're still in gall of bitterness and bond of iniquity, set right by confession of your sins through rebound and live a life of truth. Because it is the word of Lord God which cleanseth the out. They are Christians and pastor teachers as well, it may appear to you. And yet, dear brother, and what is your will? You don't want to look yourself in the mirror of the word and cleanse yourself. You do it. But we have the words for you to be revealed or nagat from the Bible. We are nagating it to you every day. It's your life whichever way you want to take. And which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. With our head, board and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudible telling to Lord God, the Father, in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Lord, my Savior. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is so very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest might is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest might is to carry Satan Lagan, herald the word in season and out of season, because the Dharma witnesses where it have been called. The number one Dharma witnesses in the Trinity, follow the Bible in our hands. And number two Dharma witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, and not worry besides nature, the entire and the decoys will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Spirit, leadeth us to the praise of His glory. Infinite Divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is for us to understand the spirit of counsel, O Lord. As you have said for us in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse number 20, the sole reason for us is to love Thee and to obey Your voice and to cleave unto Thee, so that the people on this earth could know that You are only true Lord God through our lives. To this section, Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten and honor the prayer of things that we pray, particularly through Christ Jesus, our Lord of God's prayer in John Gospel, chapter 17, that even unbelievers could believe our words and come back to their salvation. Help us to live such kind of a holy manner, walk of life in the controlling and training ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, rather than grieving and squelching and showing forth our unbelief. Help us, O Lord, to sustain on thy word, to take up our couch and walk, and to do thy will. And such as diligently, Father, and see if there is an offense within us, lead us in the way of everlasting truth. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and let him challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.